so we talked about the hip joint and what kind of axial joint is that? It's a multi-axial joint, right? So you're going to have a lot of movements. You have flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, circumduction. It's the second most mobile joint after the shoulder. So the shoulder we talked before about has a sh more shallow ball and socket, whereas the, the femur, the head of the femur is in a deeper socket. And so you get dislocations of the shoulder a lot more commonly than you can have dislocations in the hip. So when we're talking about rotation, what kind of rotation is when I think about this one? External or lateral rotation, and then talk about the internal or medial. And then sometimes it gets, like when you measure range of motion for internal and external rotation, you don't measure it like this. You put it up like this. So if you look at here, you might get confused and think maybe that's going in, but it's actually, you reference it from the anterior part of the thigh. So when I'm doing this, what kind of rotation is that? External. And then this is internal. And so as far as hip flexion, like I said, the main thing is going to be the iliopsoas, and that's deep into the abdomen. And that's going to flex like this. It's also going to externally rotate. And then also other flexors are going to be the tensor fascia lata, and then also the rectus femoris. But since the rectus femoris attaches up here, it goes to the AIIS, it's not really a strong flexor of the hip. The psoas is primarily going to be the hip flexor. All right. And then, of course, if you're going to have adductors, you're going to a to AD death, right? And then hip extension is going to be primarily the gluteus. And then also you're going to have the hamstring muscles are going to do hip extension as well. Right. So then the hamstrings, do you know what the muscles are the hamstrings are made up of? Yeah, you have semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and then biceps femoris. The biceps femoris, by the name, you know that it's going to have two parts. So it's going to have a long head and a short head. Right. Um, the details of the muscles aren't in the front part of the notes right now, because we're not going to get into the details of them. I'm just generally speaking about them. Right. So now we'll talk about hip flexors. So you have the iliopsoas, which is actually a muscle made, it's made up of two muscles. You have the iliacus and the psoas. Okay. The psoas is going to be coming from the anterior part of the vertebra right here. Okay, so that's going to be this muscle here. Okay, so you have the psoas here, and then here's the iliacus, where it's coming off of the ilium. And then those are both going to go down into the lesser trochanter on the femur. And then some of these muscles in the anterior compartment of the thigh are going to be weak hip flexors. But the primary is going to be the iliopsoas. So then here's the details of the iliopsoas. Again, this part is the psoas, and then this is the iliacus. Okay, so the iliacus is going to come off of the iliac fossa, the crest, and the lateral part of the sacrum. So it's a little bit coming down in from here. So it's coming, it's, it's, it starts out with a wide origin and then it narrows down and goes into here and inserts. And then the psoas. So when it flexes like this, it's also going to externally rotate because if it's pulling that lesser trochanter towards the origin, it's also going to externally rotate. But then also, if the thigh is stabilized, then it's going to, like when people are doing abdominal exercises and you're hooking your feet up underneath something, then that's, you're using your psoas. Okay, so We'll talk, I think we mentioned some of that before when we talked about abdominal muscles, right? When you're doing exercises, if you don't hook your feet under anything, then you're going to be more likely to use your abdominal muscles versus if you're doing sit-ups with your feet anchored and your knees bent up like that, you're going to be using the psoas to do more of the actual sit-up.
So then the origin of the psoas is going to be the transverse processes and the vertebral bodies and actually the discs. Okay, so if you have a low back problem or a disc problem, are you going to be wanting to overwork the psoas muscle that's going to be pulling on your lumbar vertebra? No. Because what else it's going to do is if you have a tight psoas or you're working the psoas, it tends to put the low back, the back in lower doses. Okay. So as it happens in the T12, and it doesn't say it in here. I was kind of wondering about that. I heard that it's well, all five lumbar vertebrae, but not the T12. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be some slight variations. It just depends on what, which book. That's based on out of the textbook. Okay, because I heard that I think some people have a psoas minor and some don't. Yeah, well, the psoas minor is a smaller one that just sits along um, the psoas. <laughs> Again, depending on which, which book you're going to look at, it's the, the origin insertions are going to vary a little bit, okay? And yeah, if you do have a psoas minor, I don't know if I have a picture of it, but it's, it's like just a smaller band that sits right along the psoas major. Why do they vary? What's that? Why do they vary? Everybody's a little different. I mean, as far as the different sources, you mean? Yeah. Not like we've gone in. So, you know, somebody maybe who was doing some dissection or research in a certain muscle, and then they found that in some cases it, it does go all the way up to T12. Somebody else didn't include it. I mean, it's just people are writing books a little bit differently. And, you know, there's no absolute source. Like I say, humans will vary from one person to another. There's slight variations. And so, depending on how someone's documenting it, there's going to be a little bit of a difference. So then you have the tensor fascia lata. Okay. So that's going to be this part here. So it's a little bit more to the front. And the belly of the muscle is, is short. It's, it's just up here. Even though it goes all the way, technically it inserts all the way down into the tibia, the bulk of it is just going to be fascia. And the belly of the muscle is just right, right up here. So let's get that a little bit. So you can see this is just the muscle part right here. And then this goes into the inner to go band. And then also the glute, part of the glute is going to insert into the omelet as well. And so again, the, the fascia lata is, is what surrounds the whole thigh. And then you have an enlarged, thickened portion of it here, which is the inner to go band. Okay, so inner to mean it goes from the ilium to the tibia. It's fascia, connective tissue. It's like a tendon, right? And instead of a ropey tendon like in the biceps, it's just a wide band of connective tissue, tendinous tissue, and then it's continuous with the fascia lata that's, uh, that's basically taken off of this, but it encloses the whole thigh. Okay? So with the TFL being more towards the front, it's gonna do some hip flexion, and then the other thing on the action is if you're, you're looking at different sources or different books, you get into a whole bunch of stuff as far as depending on what position the hip is in, what other actions that the TFL is going to do. Because maybe if, if the leg is more back in this position here, if it gets far enough back, it's going to, it could also be an extender. And we talked about it. It's, it's usually considered an internal rotator. But again, if you're looking at different sources, they'll talk about it. If it's in a different position, it may, it may do some external rotation. But the primary action usually that the TFL is considered to do is hip flexion and internal rotation. Because when we're doing muscle testing for the TFL, you're, you're doing it like this. Okay? If, if this person's laying down, you're internally rotating, and then you're resisting the stretching here. 